everyone, welcome to this episode of Speed at Scale. My name is Tracy, I'm one of your co-hosts, and we have Justin. <laughs> Hello, wonderful people. I am Justin. Justin. <laughs> Words. <laughs> We're super excited because the show is all about uh, basically doing performance at scale and looking at websites that I love to shop at or that I'm excited about. So lately I've been really excited about FIRE. So if you haven't heard of FIRE, it's Financial Independence Retire Early. And we are going to look at the performance of a website called Marcus, uh, which is, they have savings accounts, I know that. Um, but it's Marcus by Goldman Sachs. So I'm super excited to see this because it's also in FinTech and you know, FinTech is supposed to be fast, right Justin? They're supposed to be fast. I mean, if you're gonna, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of services out there in the FinTech world. If there's, you wanna convert somebody, you better make sure that front page is fast. But is it? We shall find out. All right, let's get started. So Tracy, we've got the Marcus by Goldman Sachs page up here. Mm -hmm. this, here this appears to be the US variant. We've got the Moto G4 running, because if you're in the business of testing for things, the Moto G4. What's the Moto G4? Okay, so I mean that's just the that's just the uh, the name of the uh, device, right? Yeah, the Moto G4 is a, a type of device that is sort of the de facto standard that you'll see most people testing against. It's been out for a long time. Uh, it's sort of a mid-tier to lowish end device, uh, depending on who you talk to. Uh, and it's fairly rarely available. You'll find it on one page test. You'll find it as a target profile within Chrome. And you also, in the, in the newer versions of Lighthouse that just got released, uh, it is the default that gets tested against. So the Moto G4 is what I usually look at when I start to look at a mobile site. Uh, and we started looking at performance. So, they got a pretty common looking website. Got They're using button. React. And uh, let's see, are they using React? Let's yeah. find out. Oh, yes, they are. Find lit React, man. There we go. Hmm, interesting. Uh, looks like it's got a hash there at the end. Okay, we gotta take a look at that. And uh, yeah, we got another, uh, you know, another pack base dot min. Okay, uh, we got uh, some analytics because you know who doesn't love analytics right in the bulk of uh, your head. Remarketing, uh, baby. You gotta have the remarketing. Got some change events, some blur focus. Uh, that uh, only if they have the big page visibility. Yeah, interesting. Got some more remarketing. So we got a lot of script tag and stuff. Uh, DOM-wise, uh, we don't see a lot of DOM in here, and that's probably because oop, it's hiding underneath there. So you got a pretty deep chain. Okay, well, we got a lot of some DOM nodes and things in here. Uh, let's go over to our friendly old network panel and give this a reload. Uh, we're going to go from online to fast 3G. We're going to disable the cache. And we've talked about this on the show before, Tracy, but Test the full throttle. We, we want to at least, you know, give us a, a preset uh, fast 3G. You can use your own definitions here as well if you have a particular set of users that you want to target. So we're going to get ourselves a nice little tree. So, uh, okay, so we've got, uh, let's see, some style sheets loading up here at the beginning. Uh, you can see that the content download in four seconds. What is the content? That does not seem like a very heavy uh, front page. Uh, let's see, right now we're 65 requests in, we're about 5 megs over the wire, so mm -hmm. so that's, we would not want 5 megs over the wire. Um, let's see what's blocking us up here, so we can kind of see our waterfall here. That big one uh, right there. Yeah, this big one right here, 22 seconds. And, um, and there you go, you have this image right here, okay, that's the image. How big is that image? That's a good pick, uh, okay, it's 200. It's got an age on it, yeah, it'll be It's got a whole bunch of content security policy, very nice. Um, 
But if we look, 3.4 megs for uh, this image, which I presume is this guy. Oh, God. 3.4 megs of information. Where is our lab here on the page? Let's see. <laughs> He's not even loaded, uh, though. Where's our guy? Where's our guy? Ooh, yeah. Where? Oh, ooh, yeah. What happened? Oh, our, our guy is not there. Oh my god, wait, let me, screen, let me screenshot this really quickly. 3.4 megs. Alright, I got it. <laughs> That's rough. I mean, it's a PNG. I mean, it's, it's obvious this is a live PNG. It's got transparency on it. So, wait, mean, let me take a picture. Good. Let me screenshot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's Marcus? Do you think that you know that, that's the, the you know our mascot Ma Marcus for this service? No, but uh, totally. Do you mascot things? I mean, you, I, I don't even know how that works in fintech marketing now. Do they mascot people? Like, do people become heads of things? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, we've got so image-wise, yeah, yeah, Marcus is definitely. Uh, He's still uh, not loading. Yeah, Where yeah, even is he? Yeah, where where is our where's our where's our buddy here? Our buddy is not he's somewhere on here. So as you can see on 3G, nah doing so great. Uh, mm -hmm. we've got other SVGs in here, which are a much smaller um, you know, we do have looks like a lot of things that are starting from at least a you know a good place. Um, method so yeah, we've got a post in here which tells me that they're sending some data probably for uh, probably some analytics data. Uh, every once in a while these pop up. Uh, we can see that uh, everything is on HTTPS, yay for us. Uh, and overall, I mean, you're, you're 6.2 on the wire. Um, uh -huh. uh, Protocol-wise, you know, we can look at all the things that sort of make our world fast. So you see a lot of H2, you see some H3, and if you're seeing H3, by the way, this is probably coming off of stuff. Um, so a lot of their more analytics-based stuff is now searching H3. You can actually get H3 uh, also on app spot domains now too. Wait, so, what does that even mean? This H2, H3. Okay, sorry, because I think like H2, like header, header two. <laughs> so, when we talk about protocols on the web, where we talk about uh, sort of how we transfer data back and forth. So, mm -hmm. in, so here you can see that you have some HTTP 1.1 calls, which mm -hmm. for a long time was the way we deliver stuff down the wire. So you can see that there are some stuff in here that are still shipping uh, HTTP 1.1. The problem with HTTP 1.1 is that uh, it's not particularly fast. Mm -hmm. we, we hit the cap out, and we, what we really want is HTTP 2. So, oh, HTTP2 it. requires HTTPS, so you have to be on TLS, you have to be secure. Um, so H2 you'll see primarily across the board, it lets you do a whole bunch of stuff under the hood that just overall makes you, your site faster. And then H3 is the next standard of that thing, uh, which would be HTTP3. Um, and uh, this standard is not, it's only recently started to get a little bit more traction, it's only landing from a little while ago now. Um, so you can start to play with it and start to you know experience how packets flow and what kind of values that gives. Uh, Google will, you know, from a server perspective, Google is clever about this, so it'll downgrade properly. So if you are in a browser that doesn't support H3, obviously you're still getting your Google Analytics and all those things. Um, but if you're doing it directly from a Google domain that authorizes that, and you're using Chrome, you'll get a slightly faster experience with the new H. HTTP3 support. So, like, um, should everybody who's doing development now just move to HTTP3? No, not yet. Um, we don't have uh, we don't have enough implementations out there yet, both mm -hmm. from a server side perspective and how you deliver H3 accordingly, uh, as well as on the browser side. That's so exciting to see. More, cool. You want a little bit more support, but overall, yeah, like, we look for H2 because ideally, it's going to give us. Data streams and things of that nature that'll just overall make our site a little bit faster, so we don't end up with these huge cascades across the entire structure of our uh, of our waterfall. Uh, so yeah, I mean we've got a lot of stuff going on here. There's definitely a lot of resources, 6.2 megs, and uh, we've got some huge chunks here. So 240k uh, JavaScript in that base min, uh, the uh, base React bundle, uh, which helps if you click the right buttons, Justin. Uh, let's see. 
This is the CSS, so the CSS for the base, uh, the React stuff is only about 27k. Um, but the actual React bundle for the min is over half a meg, 582 kb. So, so they really need to work on some React performance there. Yeah, That's I mean, fine. you don't want to ship that kind of content down. I mean, again, like we don't even know, like if this is the, just the base client level, I mean, we're not even talking about the stuff that actually runs this page and probably the rest of the structured version of the app. Not to mention they're delivering a lot of stuff that clearly they probably don't need out of the gate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of images and things that might be loaded. I mean, you see a JPEG down here, which is gonna get deprioritized in the stack of things, but still, do you really want to burn that six, you know, that additional mix on that sort of stuff? And my guess would be no. Like you could use the lazy you know, on image um, to sort of load those. So things they're not lazy there. loading their images. Uh, we can dig a little bit deeper into this and find out. Uh, so there's an asynchronous call to it, so it's definitely not blocking up things mm -hmm. from it. So Adrom is actually sending that image down, um, and that's the caller in here. Who's our caller? So we do see that there's definitely improvements to be made just by looking at the network. I mean, we haven't even looked at the actual performance tab yet. We're just looking at the actual network to see what's streaming down. So let's take a little trace real quick uh, and see uh, how this works out. Again, we're going to use fast 3G. I'm going to knock the throttle speed down uh, to 4X to give us a mid-tier sort of device. Again, you'd really want to test on an actual device, but for the sake of our video, we're going to use Chrome, which does a pretty good job of this. So we're going to take a profile. And I just realized that, uh, did I change control to them? I did, that's okay, we'll leave them. We'll them. So when you profile, um, when you profile, like is it just <laughs> profiling like the one page or is it profiling like the entire site? This is gonna profile the one page that you're looking at. In okay. The scope of it. So if you want to profile multiple pages or some sort of travel, as if you're taking a user path, mm -hmm. like generally speaking, you wanna be able to you can, you can programmatically do that a number of ways. You could use Puppeteer, you could uh, you know, write a lot of automation that will travel down and take snapshots of what those travels look like. Mm -hmm. uh, and with perform like with the performance tracing we're doing now in this screenshot here, that you don't have to run this on a reload state. Like you can start profiling whenever you want and then travel through. So if you're running a PWA or you know a single page application, you have a lot of routes and you have dynamic loads, and you want to see the effect of those things on how script runs, you can do that. Like there's nothing preventing you from making those sort of adjustments. But normally when we look at how do you convert users or how do you, you know, how does your page initially fire up, we want to see that start experience, which is why we usually end up with a start point of, you know, how does your start, how does your page look or, you know, how fast, you know, can I, I log in? Like, is this menu expensive? Like we can measure that too. Mm -hmm. um, and if we look at this measurement here, we, I mean, we see, Problems, right? We see a lot. We see a lot of orange right here in the bulk of things. Um, uh, there's some script evaluation going on, uh, and just in this little block, there's three seconds of scripting on top of another, you know, 300 mils of rendering time. And uh, you know, we can look at the bottom up and sort of see. And it's a little bit tough when you're looking from the outside. Here, you can see that the overall, you know, the React lib is kicking in. It's got, you know, it's using half a second of spin time there. Um, you see there's a whole bunch of layout happening. Um, Wait, so like, there's updates. tell me on. again on what it means on, you know, React just taking so much time. Like, what does that actually mean? It means that it is going through and running a set of functions for uh, some amount of work on the main thread. So a lot of times when we talk about things, we, we, we talk about the nature of what, I'm sorry, the nature of how your code reacts on that main thread. Like how, how is it a good citizen? Is it taking a lot of time to do the work that may be blocking a user from it? Mm -hmm. And we can see that there's a whole bunch of anonymous callers in here. We don't know what exact work this might be. Um, we could dig a little bit further into this. Um, but we typically look for when you're starting to trace stuff within your own code, like, you know, what are we, what are, you know, what, are, what kind of actual work are we doing? Like in this layout, or I'm sorry, in this function call, for instance, you know, it takes 47 milliseconds. What, what's actually happening there? We see an animation frame that fired that was within the 60 frames a second sort of limit in the 11-ish second frames there. We see these micro tasks where there was a parse event and then an event load, and then you had these... Uh, launches come back through, and you can see where they're getting called out. So you've got this launch, you've got a conversion call that went out, it took a little bit of 
time. And again, these are microscopic amounts of time, but all time adds up. Parse time is expensive. Running code on the main thread is expensive. So you always want to run less code. Like you don't want to ship everything that you, you, you don't need on the upfront. Like it's not particularly valuable. And so a lot of times we use the bottom up tree to sort of look and see what's going on. Um, you can use the call, call tree as well, which will show you uh, additional information. And again, we're only looking at this little tiny block right here. I mean, we could expand this or not because my mouse doesn't want to click right now. But, uh, whoa, oh, that's laggy. Uh, so, uh, again, like we can look, and this is the trace as the page is trying to figure out when everything stopped loading. So you can see that the onload event over here on the outer edge is really why this trace ran for so long is that it's looking and waiting for stuff to finish out whether it's anything that was the more priority stuff like images and everything else mm -hmm. or other events that are ongoing. And so you can sort of correlate this information. Like you can see that there's big layout shifts right here. So this is a newish thing. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't looked at DevTools you know, in the last few revisions, you layout shift may be new to you. Um, this is telling us that we've had some amount of activity that has occurred that has caused our page to structure and change, which is a, can be disoriented for users. You can see that a large contentful paint uh, occurs uh, right about 14 ish seconds, uh, and it'll tell you which node that is. So if we click it, it'll come back down here and show us this node, which. That big one, where is it? Scroll into view. I can click it. This one right here. So this is what it considered the largest contentful paint from the page. And you can see that it's actually midway down the page, which means that other pieces of this were still actually flowing into the page at the time. And so, large contentful paint is one of those metrics that is new to the platform. Uh, it is in the newer versions of Lighthouse. It is important because it sort of tells you overall where that page is. And I realize now it's weird because I was half scrolled and that's on this run. But regardless, it tells you what that thing was where we were scrolled into that structure because Chrome is a normal scroll. So, you can see other events, meaningful paint, contentful paint, all those sorts of things. So we can definitely see that there is a lot of action. I mean, that's a lot of activity in your flame charts. I mean, when you look at this, do you say, when you look at this, do you say like, wow, they need some help? Yeah, I think <laughs> that I, I look at this and, and inherently go, yeah, this is this is not great. I mean, you're dropping frames. We, well, well, what's going to cost drop frames is you see these little red arrows on top of things. Mm -hmm. and these are long tasks. So you know these tasks are taking you know, a significant amount of time to complete. Um, so this is, again, a, a sort of a newish. The, the red triangles have been there for a while, but realistically, like, the, the bars are somewhat new. Um, it's just like they're basically saying get rid of all these tasks and you're going to fix your yeah, performance. You, you, you need to you need to reduce, right? You want you want smaller tasks. I mean, it just seems like such a small website, like such a small, simple website. And yet, it requires six point two megs of stuff to do this. And yeah, you start to wonder why is that the case, right? Uh -huh. You know, and in this case, there's a lot of things going on. You've got a lot of uh, of life cycle that is probably occurring here in this basis script evaluation. Um, you know, again, you've got these huge scripting valves, you've got tasks that are running for a long time. Uh, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of callers against, and again, it's hard to tell when you're looking at the production page output because you can't see what fun these functions are inherently doing. You'd have to dive further into it. But again, like to some extent, we can, we can take a peek because we can go to Lighthouse and say, hey, you know, help me understand a little about a little bit more about this so that we don't have to dig so far in because if you're new to it and you're looking at this performance tab going, I don't understand what is actually going on here and why this is particularly terrible. Uh, Playhouse helps with this because we can generate a report and it's gonna run against, again, Moto 24 and it's gonna warm up, do all the things that Lighthouse does and give us some inclination of, you know, is Justin crazy? Is that trace actually terribly bad? Do you think um, Moto G4 still has that ringtone? Hello, Moto. I think it does, actually. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure the one, I know it's got the chimes. Uh, I know the chimes are on the, the one that. Ooh, this is terrifying. Is. This is terrifying. Yeah, this is not a great That is like the worst we've ever seen. Yeah, this is not great. <laughs> uh, I've never seen an eight before. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh wait, let me screenshot it. I'm gonna tweet. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's it's not gonna win any speed contests. Okay. And again, I'm 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 constrained in mobile networks, which <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna find stuff like this a lot. Yeah. What's going on here? Is it just that it's just like not even loading? Like none of the nothing's loading on the left. Yeah, so in this case, I suspect what happened is this is the, the last render for the uh, the last cycle on my Lighthouse, which turns mm -hmm. off JavaScript and tries to load the mm -hmm. um, non JavaScript version. So uh, this is probably that output, is, is my guess, though. Usually it goes back to normal. So that's They just have like big ass contentful paints, it looks like, when you look at the performance tab, and lots of blocking time. Yeah, so, and again, like, if, if we compare these two things, and we can look, I mean, we can view the trace that Lighthouse produces as well, and you'll note that the trace is not significantly different. Um, mm -hmm. It looks a little bit different in terms of the coloring, but realistically, you're still seeing the entire chain uh, that you would notice within, uh, within a performance grab, where you're seeing lots of drop frames, you're seeing... So what is a drop tests. frame, though? Like, it just means that, like, look, it took too long, so it just fit, stalled out. You only have so many, you only have so many seconds mm -hmm. um, where you can render something to the browser. Uh, like any other piece of software, like, this is not particularly a browser thing, per se. Um, but on the platform, realistically, you can think about, if you want 60 frames a second, you have X amount of milliseconds within that frame, so you have about 16. Uh -huh. Thereabouts when you break that stuff down. So when you're talking about drop frames, am I getting 60 frames a second out of something? And that can be scrolling, that can be other animations that are occurring on the page. It could be all kinds of these things that sort of combine and group up uh, where exactly we might be uh, as we're trying to run with those frames. So realistically, this. Uh, but if you ran this on a fiber, if you ran this on, you know, with like a fiber connection. And, and like a map. Yeah, you're not gonna yeah, you're not gonna get this effect on fiber. Because yeah. again, like if you're on high speed internet, it's 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 an entirely different story. Like six point two megs on high speed internet is probably not the end all worst case scenario. But is that even particularly good? And I would argue that it is still not. Mm -hmm. So just because you can get assets down the wire very fast on something doesn't make those assets less expensive to parse and render. Mm -hmm. Like you still have those claims. So if I'm sitting here on a Xeon or a Threadripper CPU and going, look, everything runs fine for me, we're not really doing justice to our end users. Like our end users do not have Threadrippers and are not using workstations to do most of their internet browsing. You know, my kids, uh, you know, and most of the people I know live on devices that are not fresh. They are not brand new things. They are not the latest iPhones and uh, pixels of the world. Uh, so when we start to measure these things, um, outside of the bubble that we sort of exist in, which developers get stuck in a lot, that's where this stuff comes into play. Because once you start actually testing, going, wow, my code runs really, really heavy. Wow, I have a large contentful paint. Wow, that's a lot of white strings on this. I mean, uh, you've got render blocking resources straight away. Because I mean, this just seems like super easy hits, like super easy things that can just be fixed. Well, the Lighthouse even tells you, hey, by the way, like you should be able to split your stuff with React.Lacy. And this is the nice thing about the newer versions of Lighthouse, if you're using one of the major frameworks. Lighthouse will try to surface things and be like, yo, you should be doing this now <laughs> so that you don't end up with this. Um, because there's a lot of unused code within these stacks, right? So like, you know, this React min, right? It's basically, it looks like the entirety of React. You don't really need to ship that. You can break it apart now. Like mm -hmm. the tools are there. Like this is not, this is not. Oh, React is inherently heavy. Like it can be if you build things wrong. Basically, so, what you should be taking out of this video is that React totally sucks and it's gigantic. <laughs> Use and, Angular. I'm just kidding. Well, I think I think this is where people get hung up on the framework wars of things. Where yeah. people are like, I I don't want. X, X framework is bad because of this. And my my question, my, my, my response to that generally is, anything is bad if you are you using don't know it how to in use a it. certain way. Yes. Yeah, if you're, you know, I can, 
generally make most code pretty fast, regardless of the framework, by understanding how the load behavior and what the user needs to do within the scope of a feature, which sometimes means that you don't shift the entire kitchen sink with everything. And with stuff like this, where you see lots of lockers, and you know we've seen this before in other show episodes, where you have analytics, you have all this stuff that fires up that is not really like, do you want to limit your user experience to a conversion? Like, I, I think it's ironic that we're trying to track conversions, and by doing so, we're probably costing ourselves conversions. <laughs> because we don't understand the, the hit that we take for that stuff. And again, like, we can preload stuff, like, you know, fonts and things. You can remove a lot of some CSS, like, you know, there's some weight here to be saved. And a lot of this we can do with tooling. Like, you don't have to be, you know, magical browser expert person to do a lot of this work. Yeah. You just don't need to. So, yeah, and then a lot of mainframe work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's 16 seconds. Like, you don't want to do 16 seconds of mainframe work. So, yeah. There are things to do on this one. I would definitely say there are improvements to be had. Especially on the accessibility and the SEO side. I feel like those should just automatically be 100. Yeah, people, I mean, the thing that people struggle with struggle with, with accessibility is that a lot of times it's a secondary thing for folks. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't take it into account when they're, when they're starting to develop it. And because of that, they skip steps. And when you do that, you end up with scores that are not super great because you didn't run Axe or you didn't run some other piece of technology uh, to sort of vet your stuff. Um, you know, in this case, 83 is not terrible, but... You know, a lot of these things are reasonably easy. Oh yeah, contrast right. ratio, yeah. super easy. Yeah, yeah the alt right. attributes. I have alts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Links do not have a discernible name. Yeah, this is, yeah. this just seems like, you know, junior developer pounded out in a day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that you can crank a lot of these things out, and you can get quick wins. Like you don't have to, you know, deal with that. Uh, deal with these problems all at once. Like you can break them apart and deal with it. Um, and simply speaking, you know, you've got <laughs> you've got non-resolved errors and you know some stuff that didn't get applied. Again, these are all things that you can run through your CI. You can test this stuff in the White House and get these things. And out. make and it a plot. Kind of yeah. 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 I mean, you could want to do this. Uh, same thing with your manifest. Have a manifest. Always have a manifest. There's no reason not to ship it, even if you're not a full PWA. Anyway, have a manifest. <laughs> so that was a ton of fun. Honestly, I feel like I just want to go hang out with the Marcus Goldman Sachs website folks and, you know, just create a bunch of Jira tickets for them because, you know, there's so many exciting things that we can do to help improve that experience. Um, I personally love the Marcus by Goldman Sachs brand. I think it's great. I don't know if like the Marcus brand is supposed to like appeal to millennials or zennials or you know whatever whatever the younger generation that isn't baby boomers is, call is called. But it's pretty cool. And you know that little guy was, or I shouldn't say little guy, but like the JPEG of the dude was pretty exciting. Even though we didn't see it on the website. Yeah, I'm very curious as to where it actually was. Um, you know, we could, we could we could take the throttle off and find him, uh, I presume. He, I mean, it must be there somewhere. But where it is, like again, like these are the things that this is why this is why you vet your performance. Is that that is a huge bandwidth win for people, especially now. Like bandwidth is, you know, in short supply. I mean. Yeah. My kids restarted school and both schools went down today. Oh. Because, yeah, day two of school canceled because the internet was down and slow. And this is what happens is that you cannot, that, those are high speed, hard lined internet connections at large schools and you can't, you can't guarantee that out. And I think that's the thing that as you start to build experiences where you're trying to get users onto a platform. You know, and it, like you said, if it's a if it's a if it's that millennial group that they're targeting, or someone whatever target they may have, if you're not taking performance into account, yeah, you are in for a pickle, because, you know, uh, our guy of 3.2 megs, who we can't even see. Yeah, we can't. Who we can't see. Who who I'm looking right now. I cannot find this person on this page. Uh, you know, is that is that worth 
the bandwidth. I mean, do you want to spend the money on that bandwidth? I mean, it's not free. Spending the money, do you want to spend the money on the loss of users? Like how many users are they acquiring and how many losers are they actually, you, how many losers are they losing? <laughs> how many users are they losing? Like, it'd actually be quite interesting to basically think like, okay, hey, you're actually losing, uh, you know, this is actually affecting your conversion rate by 10%. If you increase your conversions by 10%, what kind of revenue is that gonna actually bring you, right? Like, if Marcus is doing a billion dollars, which they probably are, right? If Marcus is doing a billion dollars, what's a 10% increase in that? One and this is why we billion? do, and this is why, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to not look at it and wonder, right? How much is you point one to, of 1 billion? 100 million? Yes, 10%. Dude, I want a hundred million dollars. Hell, if we can go fix these things, increase conversion rate, and that's gonna give them a hundred million boost in revenue, how much of that hundred million do we get? How much? Justice? I don't know. I, I I I only trace them. I don't negotiate. <laughs> but it's I'm worth excited. something. Look, you just give me twenty million, and we'll <laughs> increase your dude. Twenty million dollars to increase your conversion rate by a hundred million dollars. Oh, well worth it. Uh, you know, that's yeah. positive MPV. <laughs> Well, anyways, Marcus, please hire us. <laughs> you know, you can find me and Dustin hanging out all the time at the Salt Labs. Um, you know, we are always having fun with uh, stack tracing and web performance and recording fun videos like this. Yeah, and don't worry, you can you can make the changes to make your performance life better. Don't take it as you know a knock against you know anything. Take it in stride. Make those tickets. It can be fixed. <laughs> If you have any exciting like fintech related um, websites that you want us to check out, make sure to leave a comment in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> or find us on the internet, that's totally fine as well. Yes, if you're a denizen of the Twitters, do make sure to ping us. Because we're on there, twittering and things. <laughs> or you're on there, I'm not on there as much as I used to be. So. You're tagged on there. I'm tagged on there. I will see it. It'll yeah. show up in a queue somewhere. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. Or make sure to like and subscribe. And, you know, we do this every single week. So, um, Justin, I'm thinking about Wealthfront as the next test. What do you think? I think we can do it. All right. I know, I know we can do it. <laughs> Well, stay tuned, look uh, up for, you know, one of the next episodes we have coming out and we'll see you next time. Thanks and have a, stay safe out there, people.